After scandals like Baby P, most social workers feel criticised from all sides. Either they're interfering home wreckers or incompetent do-gooders who fail to protect our children. I think it's the most hated profession in the nation, probably. And I even have some people in wider family who say, oh, why are you a social worker? And they won't even admit to their friends that they have a social worker in their family. You're not very liked. Suzanne is a newly qualified social worker, one of several filmed in Bristol over a year. It's November, and Suzanne is six weeks into her very first case, a family who are struggling with their young boy. Mike and Tiffany have a three-year-old son. Toby is well behind in his development. He cannot speak and still wears nappies. For his own protection, he will not be identified. The family are living in basic accommodation and Toby doesn't yet have a bed to sleep in. So how's his bed coming on? It's see, getting not... delivered today or tomorrow. OK, well... That is really urgent, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know if you could get hold of a mattress or something where you could sleep till now well, or not. he's actually slept on the settee last night and the night before. Okay. What time does he... Because he's fallen asleep and we just left him there. Yeah. So, Mike, do you think you, you're prepared to answer a few questions? The case has become much more serious since bruises were found on Toby two weeks ago. Right. On the other day, you might be a trained social worker. Okay. But what I am still fuming about mm. is the way that you accused me on Friday. We're investigating at the moment, um, well, Mike, and I'm, I'm here to protect children. You really split the family up. Let's get it straight. Michael, can you please calm down? Well, it's true, Donna. Listen, Mike, we're doing this in front of your child. I'm not really feeling that comfortable, that you're raising that voice. You're out to do one thing. Well, you're quite stuck in that opinion, aren't you? And um, yeah. we've said to you before that that's not the way. You're out to do one thing, Suzanne, and I know you're out to do one thing. OK. And I'll repeat it now with the camera. You're out to wreck us. Any new job is always scary. It's not nice to be shouted at. He can flip in from second to second. I'm worried about my own practice, worried about what will happen if I see him next. And yes, it gets into my dreams and into my subconscious where I don't want it to be. If I'm that worried about Mike, if I'm that scared, how does Toby feel in this? The next day, the family are called to the office, as there may be legal consequences in the case. Suzanne has received a medical report indicating some of the bruising may be grab marks. Do you want to take some toys? Yeah, you do, don't you? You grab some toys you want to take. Because she's new to the job, Suzanne is supported by a more experienced social worker. Okay, because the purpose of this, this meeting now is, is to go through this. And the main concerns that initiated, started this assessment, are the two fingerprint bruises that were found on Toby's arm by the paediatrician. Now, regarding the actual bruises, the reason given for the left arm was not seen to be consistent by the paediatrician with the injuries that were there. The one on his arm, I done immediately yeah, yeah. because he got out of his buggy, went yeah. to run into a busy road, so I grabbed him. Mm. I didn't actually mean to leave a bruise mm. on him, because yeah. if it's a criminal record, then go ahead and kill 
carry on. Yeah, Give yeah. it to me because I'd rather have a criminal record than a yeah. dead son. But even the one that you can explain to us, it is still a concern because the paediatrician has said that the injury doesn't seem consistent with that version of events so of grabbing him and to stop him running into the road. So again, it, it, it's likely it's come from somewhere else. Um, there was the bruise on the face which he told us happened when Toby fell over or was pushed over by the dog and hit his head on the radiator, OK? When he was little, he ran into my laptop. Mm. Yes, he bled. Yes, he cried. He cried for about five minutes. That hurt. When he ran into the radiator, he stood up and he laughed. Mm. So surely, I'm sorry, if it's going to work, he'd be crying and he'd be screaming his head off. Surely to God, I know more about my son than you guys do from day one when you've been with us. He's pointing the finger at me. I just had an absolute gut full of that. And uh, Suzanne was the one that st stood there and accused me of doing it. Would you like us to look after him for a while, um, just whilst you're having the conversations? I'm just aware that he's hearing a lot of this. Do you want to come and do some playing with us next door? Yeah? Yeah? yeah. Come on, then. There, you go. there we go. We've got some toys here. Do you want to like that as well? So basically, if we work with you guys and do everything you ask, mm. everything will be OK, yeah? I'm not going to stand here and say that things aren't serious and that that isn't a concern. I understand that they're okay. serious, yeah. I do. It's, it's that very... is why we're trying to change it. I did mm. have a bad view of social workers mm. because I didn't have them around mm. when I needed them when I was a kid. Yeah. Mm. Mm. A feeling. And now that I didn't want them, mm. they're there. Yeah. I'd rather accept the help mm. and have my kid and mm. not have him yeah. because I've lived my whole life with her, my mum. Mm. And, and that's affected you, hasn't it? Yeah. Mm. And, and, and we know the I don't want to see two, but you have the same thing. Mm. Mm. Really sorry to interrupt you again. I just thought you would want to know he's fallen asleep flat, flat, flat on the desk <laughs> in the other room. <laughs> Suzanne and Paul call the meeting to an end. There's insufficient evidence of physical abuse to take the matter to court. why they're reacting the way they are but they've got to understand that obviously the parents are reacting the way they are because you got two social workers saying you're rough handling your own kid of course you're gonna have a dig or a pop on to be honest I just can't wait to get a shot of them The team manager, Sally Ann, remains worried about Toby's developmental delay and the conditions in which he's living. The main concern is parental neglect. We've also got the additional information that the parents have not been taking Toby for his medical appointments, he's not been going to nursery, dad's really volatile reaction, poor conditions lack of food in the house, etc. The basic stuff that we've been expecting at, at this time have not done it. Focusing on mum, she's not doing anything. She does lip service. She's telling us, mm. yeah, 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 I will do that. He still doesn't have a bed. He doesn't have a toothbrush. All those kind of underlying kind of neglect. And Mike said, oh, I don't brush my teeth. Why should he brush his teeth? I feel like we just really need to say, look, except you don't agree with us, but let's talk about what's important, which is a plan of progress. Could we do another follow-up yeah. visit? Yeah. A week on, another experienced social worker, Louise, is asked to support Suzanne. All I need is my keys, isn't it? I don't need anything else. Sally Ann asks them to make an unannounced visit to the family home. Do you know much about it apart from that dad? I know everything about this case. We've all lived and breathed, haven't we? I was here last week when that little chappy was asleep on that table. What's the briefcase for? 
It's my well, bag. Hold it, you know? No, just dead children. Come on, darling. <laughs> Everybody in this job remembers what it was like having their first case that was complex or difficult or unexpected and, and we all remember that feeling of how on earth am I going to cope with this and deal with this and make sure I get it right and the responsibility of getting it right for the child. And I think to go together and, and do those visits is supportive to somebody like Suzanne on a case like this. How's he getting on with brushing his teeth? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Who's doing it? Tell me. Is he doing it or...? Yeah. Right. Sorry, Mike, to say that this is not quite what we were talking about, wasn't it? Right, I just need to pop into the bedroom. Oi. All that clutter in the corner, where did that come from? And his potty in the corner, isn't it? OK, Mike, I've just done a quick pop-in visit. Are you good at housework? Crack on and get it sorted. When you go in a house like that, mm. would you leave a dog in there? No. So why would we leave a child? They've got no interest, they're not engaging in requests by us. You know, it's neglect. You've got to remember, Sally Ann have not been in that house. Mm. You got to bring that house to her. Yeah. The fact that every time you go there, you're actually saying to them, this house has not changed. It's not good enough. There's not any space for that child to play unless he sits on the newspaper that's provided for the dog to pee and poo on. Yeah. Actually, I'm thinking this little boy shouldn't be there. But there's a difference between mess, which you know that if you looked at 10 minutes and you could sort that out, to mess that you know is going to take you days, and you've got food and faeces, urine, and stuff all over the floors and that. Your natural response is to provide comfort, so bedding, you know, and stuff like that. If that's not there and it's all sprawled on the floor, that you know that child's then just sleeping wherever, that is a sign of neglect. If you had no money, you would still provide a, a duvet and a pillow somehow. When you fail to think that because you're meeting every need, which might be your own, is when then the risks present. The bathroom was filthy, completely stained, dirty. The um, toilet hasn't been cleaned for a while. The toothbrush was just lying on this filthy okay. floor. You know, like from last week, this. It sounds to me like we need to do a written plan with them that specifically goes through the jobs that they need to be doing in this house. What do you think? Yep, that's fine. You look really worried about this child. <laughs> I am. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. It's just like, because everybody who I've spoken to and talked to about this child, and now just um, Louise, she said, why is this child still in there? Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to say, well, actually, I don't know why. If you get to a point where you have to remove a child, it's better to do that yeah. and do it successfully. We have to illustrate we've given a family every opportunity to understand the concerns and change. And one of our biggest problems is that we've had this case in this team a matter of just a very few weeks. Mm. We need to be allowing that a bit more time. Does that make sense? No, it does make sense, yeah. Sorry for being so... <laughs> no, no, no. Not quite, yeah. You know, I don't mind social workers coming to me and saying, I'm really, really worried about this, and then as both sharing the risk together. I think I'd quite like to come and meet this family. You know, we, we talked about you and I doing a joint visit, and I think I'd quite like to come, actually. Should we do one together on Friday? Yeah.
To help the family, the social workers buy Toby his first bed. But they insist that Mike and Tiffany must clean up and provide better care for him. Every single task is laid out in a formal agreement. It does get upsetting because we do try. Yeah, our house is never going to be a palace kind of thing. But at the end of the day, we haven't got a lot of space. And you can only do your best with what you've got. And with kids, they make mess anyways. The agreement requires them to make a clean play area for Toby, away from the dog. Check your mate out there now. Be honest, there's a pokey small two bad flies. Mainly the carpet can do a good another good going over, but you ain't gonna get that up much better. It just seems like they're widening the goalposts to their advantage. They're always finding faults. We know that for a fact. What's that? Scrum. <laughs> Obviously, you get your parenting skills from your own parents. We were getting to the point where we were, like, delving into our own past to see how our parents coped with us and how it affects us coping with our own children. My upbringing, it wasn't all too pleasant. You don't want to put your child through the same pain you went through. Hey, <laughs> you can't get out, mate. Uh, yeah, you ain't yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, dream on some. Uh, uh, Can I come eat your dinner, uh, Toby? Doggy, move. Concerns about Mike and Tiffany's ability to parent are increased by the news that Tiffany is pregnant. Their unborn child is another new case for Suzanne. If the family home doesn't improve, I, I couldn't see a newborn going into that home at the moment. And it's definitely a big risk. And at the moment, the parents can't see that. Three days later, Sally Ann wants to see for herself how the agreement is progressing. I don't know what's better, we just go it's through every time. It's not 100% yet, okay. but we're getting there. The stair yeah, gate was see. semi up. Have you got here it though, the stair gate? Where's the stair That's one of the on the side of the door. Okay, so that's on the go. Uh, not quite done by seven. So the actual gate yeah. itself is... is it in my room. Took it off. Off. He took it off? How did he get it off? It's quite easy. So what, what are you going to need to do to get it back on again? What you got to do? I need to break it on down there. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to fit one to there, OK. Have you got, you've got a screwdriver, are you going to just screw it into the wall and yeah. just do that? Yeah. Have you managed to wipe the floors in the kitchen yeah. and things? Yeah. Have you managed to clean the um, bathroom floors? Can I have a look? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Did you buy duvet covers and um, sheets? He used our duvet. What did you use? We just slept in the clothes. Did you? Yeah. You're not talking the blame on us. No, do me a favour, shut up, please. Come quick, wherever you want to run in a minute, please. Me? Yeah. Me now? Uh, in a minute. OK, yeah. It's about a certain person with child. It's one to one. Suzanne can't do anything on her own. She works as All part right. of a team. She like. is stirring this the wrong way. I've never liked her from day one. Never have done, never will. 
and I'm never going to like her. Then I support what Suzanne is doing. Surely to God, I can actually turn around and say I don't want her out. And ask for a different female social worker. I'm really sorry, Mike, but I can't give you another social worker. Then okay? I'll be I taking this think... one further, i.e. That's fine. I'll be, I'll be contacting my local MP today. I hope you, we can no, work... I'll be contacting my local MP today. ...on your relationship no, with each other. I'll be contacting my local MP today. OK. i <clears throat> Suzanne's not done anything wrong. Not all families gel with their social worker. Mike is blaming other people. He's blaming just, just about anything he can than actually to, to just always to distract the, the real issue, which is the fact that he is not able to parent his son in a way which is good enough. Alrighty. And Mike needs to understand that Suzanne isn't making decisions in isolation. She's not doing that on her own. So she can't formulate a sort of, you know, a, 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 her own one-track mind plan. It's not possible when, when you've got a, a team of people working with a, a case like this. In December, there's a case conference. Professionals from health and education will join the social workers to raise increasing concerns about Toby in front of his parents. My name is Maggie. I'm employed by Bristol City Council solely to chair these meetings and this will be my only contact with the family. But first of all, I want to know what it is the professionals in particular think is contributing to the situation as you find it. One of the things that I feel is a real problem here has been the defensiveness from Mike and mm. we're seeing somebody who's been really quite hostile and really unwilling to talk about change and has been preoccupied with arguing mm. with us and that stopped us from being able to talk about how things can be better. Mm. We would very much hope that Mike can, can hear the sort of views of today and can maybe consider better ways of, of, of trying okay. to come up with a, a plan that he's willing to take on board really. Okay. Do you understand why yes. Sally Ann was is made those comments? Yeah, all right, but every time it seems like they put an obstacle in the way and get at me. Putting that disagreement that you've got to one side. Yep. What about your parenting and your concern for Toby and how he is? The only concern I've got is his speech and his behaviour. If you tell him no and you start telling him off for summer, mm. he has throat pains. What you guys don't understand, he is an absolute handful. Do you think he gets frustrated because he can't make himself understood? Do you think some of his behaviour might be down to that? Some of it is, but some of it ain't. When you actually tell him no, are you for slamming the door? Mm. Just gets more frustrated. Okay. You know he can listen, but half the time you carry on. Nobody has done nothing till now when we run Maria. And that's why I get irate with you guys. Thanks. It's absolutely crucial that we get the right service engaged and that will require quite a significant commitment from Mike and Tiffany. I appreciate, Mike, that you do feel quite defensive about the allegations, but don't let that get in the way of actually accessing the services that he needs. He needs his parents to prioritise his needs over their own needs. sally -Ann, what's your view? Do we need a child protection plan? My view is yes. It's not sufficient for us to feel confident that Toby's needs are being protected and that mm. he's that he's not at risk of, of, of significant harm. OK. Yeah. Suzanne? Yes, I agree. Paul? I also agree, yeah. I agree. But what I am concerned about is that Tiffany and Michael haven't taken seriously his developmental delay mm. and, and accepted the recommendations of professionals. OK. <coughs> I agree also, yes. And the category of that risk I'm going to put down as neglect because I, in my view, that I think that is the most, the most overriding um, or the most prominent factor within this case. But that's notwithstanding that there have been bruises and that Tiffany has accepted or acknowledged that that's a result of her handling of him. So um, key to this is going to be getting the right services in to support Mike and Tiffany in managing Toby's behaviour because that behaviour management will then hopefully prevent any further need for that kind of handling from them. Okay? Mm -hmm.
Toby is now subject to a child protection plan. If the situation doesn't improve, the case could go to court and Toby be removed from Mike and Tiffany's care. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Rock, rock, rock your boat gently down the stream. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. Ah! Good boy. The child protection plan means Suzanne keeps an even closer eye on the family. Ready? Steady. And child health experts observe Toby at play sessions to help his behaviour and find out why he can't speak. I didn't start talking until I was quite late, same with Michael. It could be hereditary. It might not, but no one could tell us for sure why he's not talking. I was late talking. I didn't talk to us. Six. Six. Um, what they think, they can carry on thinking. Again, you can't really tell social services going politely oh. as much as I want to. <laughs> After 40 hours of assessment, the lead paediatrician shares the findings. In summary then, he does chuck things around quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And I would think, I mean, I felt quite threatened by the missiles that were held around the room. So, I think everybody feels yeah. the same way, even us, so or his parents. That, that has to be taken into consideration in terms of the level of support he gets. His Developmental age at the age of three and eight months is much more in the range of 12 to 24 months. So his needs are quite considerable and we've done some investigations to see if there's any underlying cause for his developmental delay. And all the investigations have been negative so far. So I think our feeling generally has been that Toby's developmental delay is part of his genetic inheritance. Both Tiffany and Michael had delayed language development, Tiffany was telling me. So this may well be part of a, a familial condition. However, you know, we do have to acknowledge that there have been other issues about neglect and um, you know, those are being addressed within the child protection process, aren't they? Yeah. Good. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Although the experts say Toby's delay is hereditary, the social workers are still worried about neglect. You're going down. <laughs> After four months of intensive work, there's no sign of any improvement in how Toby's being looked after. The temper that they've seen on him is absolutely tame. They're not here 24 hours a day, Sunday's week. And what they see when they're here is two different things to when they're not here. Hey! Stop! Stop! One minute he'll be playing nicely with some cars and next minute he could be throwing them at you or hitting you with them. He had chipped a bone in my wrist from where he had smacked me with one of his cars. I've had bite marks, pinch marks, bruises, cuts. 
I said no to some chocolate just before bedtime one night and he had bit me and left a really sore mark that stayed for months on end. The problem is, you know, he's three and a half years old. He can't speak. He, he's not able to do basic things that children, even a year younger than him, are able to do. Um, and the advice that we've been given from the medical profession is that he's, a child like him has got about another six months before that window of opportunity to help him catch up with his peers will be lost. Um, so I think as, you know, as, as a multi-agency group working with this child, I think we have a responsibility to, to, to try and effect some change for him very quickly. No. Oh, no. Calm down, please. No. With time pressing, Sally Ann wants to take the case to court. Only a judge can decide to remove Toby from his parents. Tigger. It's a huge process to take a case to court. These kinds of neglect cases are hard often to evidence, but overall we have not reached a place where we feel these parents are managing to keep up a standard of care which is good enough. The carpet is still sodden, the place is very dirty. We can't go on. It can't go on. Before legal action can begin, events take an unexpected turn. Tiffany is rushed to hospital with serious complications in her pregnancy. Hello. Faced with looking after Toby on his own, Mike home. agrees with Tiffany that Toby should go to a foster carer until she can come yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. Mike, you know, he'd have no idea about what he was going to do with him tonight, cook, feed, put him to bed, be aware of his emotional needs, be protective towards him. And, you know, we have real concerns that he wouldn't be able to do that. Of all the work that we've done with this family, we've not been able to see an evidence of the fact that Mike is willing to do these things. It was always Tiffany that was doing it. What we're now looking at is a position where Mike could have the sole care of Toby. That's, for me, too risky. Okay, and have you got, did you bring your stuff? Is that everything he needs for yeah. tonight? Lovely. Have you talked to him and told him that he's going to stay with a lady called Jane tonight? Do you want to just explain to him that it's, that it's what's... You're off for them, mate, all right? I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> it's all right, sweetie. <laughs> Mummy went to see the doctor today, darling. <laughs> It's all right. You're going to go to sleep tonight, and when you wake up tomorrow, you'll see Daddy tomorrow. <laughs> and you're going to go and stay with a lovely lady called Jane. Personally, you've got no chance of calming down now. He's going to be like that now all night. I don't know, Dad. I don't see why you talked me into it. Thank you for agreeing what you've agreed to. No, I haven't agreed to it yet, because I've, I've signed I nothing. I just don't want to talk and raise voices in front of him when I'm he's already upset. Nothing, am I? So it's not agreed. Can I ask that you ring your solicitor and ask them to deal with this Don't urgently? Don't be there all your life. Sorry to bother you. I've um, got a situation that sort of service has put me in. No, it's okay. Um, they've basically spoke me into uh, giving them consent to take this off for one night. Basically, indirectly, they're saying they don't trust me with him. Can you tell me if that's illegal or not? Right. So, yet again, I'm getting judged. All right, cheers, bye-bye. I'm seriously reconsidering not giving you consent. But you were OK when you came in the car and when we got out and when we were There's up here. There's still some effy going on. like to suggest is that we go with what we agreed for now. No, you want him out of my care. Try and stay calm with this, okay? Stay calm? 
This is extremely serious. What grounds have you got to take him up in tonight? We're so worried about him staying with you on his own tonight. We would like He's him to come into foster son. care. He's staying with me. So you, you're now withdrawing your consent, is that right? Basically. Yeah, you're withdrawing your consent. More or less. No, no, we can't do more or less, Mike. All right, we either have your consent or we don't. Back in the days, my son, if I want him to stay with me, he will. OK. I've All got right. no option. All right, can I ask you to hold on here for a little bit longer whilst I just go and make a couple of phone calls? You've been really quite unhelpful to that child. Mike, can I have a word with you away from Toby just for two minutes, please? <laughs> Today, to yeah, try and you avert, work with me. to avert a problem, and now we are in a situation. Okay, we, uh, we, I'm not saying I've got grounds to take him off you. You haven't tonight, and I'm not trying to do yes, that. Yes, you are. I was trying to reach an agreement with you. In the absences of, of us being able to reach that agreement, the responsibility is yours. Either way, what happens now is that we are, we are going to put this matter before a court, and they will make a decision about whether or not he comes into foster care. Well, I'll, say, haven't been given the I'll see you guys, Broadwalk CYPS, in court. So, thank you for your cooperation, thank you for your support, it's what you wanted, you're in court. He's withdrawn his consent and he's gone home with Toby now. We're going to have to get this into court ASAP. We can't manage the risk when there's just no cooperation whatsoever. Can you ring Tiffany? Just to let her know what Mike has said tonight. I feel so worried about him going home with him tonight. In the bag that he sent for Toby just now, there was, there was a change of T-shirt and a water bottle. But Tiffany told him what no to take. No toys, no... Nothing. As they can't get a court hearing that evening, Sally Ann asked the police to visit the home. They find Toby awake at 10 p.m., but he is not in distress. The next morning, the nursery yeah. reports new concerns. Since Dad brought him in yesterday and today, his nappy wasn't changed. He smelled of urine. His shoes were the wrong way round. Obviously, Toby probably put them on. He can put his shoes on, but he didn't look out for that. Um, and also, he didn't have lunch when he came in today. And only when they asked Angie, did he have lunch, he said, oh, no, we didn't give him any. And now they... And he's, and he's supposed to have lunch before yes. he attends nursery? Yes, he does. OK. That afternoon, the court issues an emergency protection order considering Toby to be at risk of immediate harm. Suzanne arranges for him to go into foster care for five days. After three days, Tiffany is unexpectedly discharged from hospital. But social workers have decided that Toby should remain in care and only see his parents under supervision. You're enjoying your juice too much, aren't you? So you've been enjoying nursery? Have you been going? Look at Mummy. Look at Mummy, please. Mummy misses her cuddles. Yeah, she does. Oi. Oi, cheeky monkey. Cheeky monkey. Oi. Oi. Be nice to mummy. Oh, 
Why not? I think he's eager to get to school. Off you go to nursery. See you later, bye. See you soon, guys. Bye bye, bye buddy. Bye. Paul must break the news that they want to extend the care order. Hello, Mike. How do you think it went today? Okay. Okay. It's quite difficult, isn't it, to, to say goodbye? I know that you care about quite it. Quite difficult. Very That's difficult. an understatement, Paul. We're going to go back to court and submit reports and say what we would like to happen from there is. And what are you looking at happening? What we're we looking at happening? Well, at the moment we're looking at keeping the situation as it is. We would like no. to repeat to be in. I'm not giving that consent on Thursday. So how long are you looking at keeping it. them? Well, what we'd be asking for is an interim care order, and then we'd be looking at what we think is is the better ongoing situation for Toby. Whether that's a short period in foster care whilst things get sorted out for you guys, or whether we feel that that's a more permanent solution. To be honest, I feel like I've been punished for being pregnant and ill. Well, we are. That's exactly what's happening. This wouldn't have happened if I was at home to be able to look after him. But the standard of care before the pregnancy was not up to a standard that was acceptable, so it, it... Yeah, and we were getting on top of it. It, it wasn't good enough. There's really no, no measurable change, and, and we don't feel that this is acceptable. That's why we're in court. He's staying in foster care for eight weeks. Obviously we're waiting for an email or a phone call from say, yeah, the contact times of this and that. I mean, it's only one hour long, which in my eyes ain't even long enough. Mm. I saw him yes was it yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday for an hour. And like Michael said, it's not long enough. He can't understand why his mummy and daddy aren't taking him home with them. And it hurts me to see him like that. A few days later, Tiffany is readmitted to hospital. She's 26 weeks pregnant, but is advised to stay in until the baby is born. Preeclampsia can be highly dangerous, and especially if you get what's called eclampsia, which is like epileptic fits, but worse. And they could be fetal, which they're worried that could happen. That's why they're trying to keep me in for the duration. When you're already stressed out because of what's going on at home, that doesn't help. But at the end of the day, I've got to think about the baby first. I don't really get my hopes up, because if it's another one, it's another one. If it survives, it survives. Toby's my seventh, and my only surviving. So I just take it as it comes now. Because I've had, what, three stillborns. Uh, one here, one Danix, and then one in hospital. And four miscarriages. Toby has been in care for 10 days. The new court order allows his parents to see him for three hours a week. Mike's contact is being assessed by the Guardian, a child expert appointed by the court to help determine whether Toby should return home. Hey, I'm in. Hello. Have they set out? All 
point. <laughs> It's going to be some nursery, okay? Some parts of it were good, other parts I thought, as a parent, you could probably make a bit more effort, if you like, to, to interact, to get down on his level, play with him on the floor, suggest some toys, bring some things out for him, that sort of thing. I wrote down in my notes it, it was 45 minutes before you got up off the couch. He, he, he tended to lead things very much himself, which is okay for some of the time, but I think you may get more sort of in interaction and stimulation with him if you're kind of directing it a bit as well and talking to him and making lots of eye contact and so on. Those things can help, really help children develop and, you know, move, move things forward. Right. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, there were parts of it which were, which were positive, I thought. Two months before her due date, the health risks to both Tiffany and baby become so severe that she undergoes an emergency caesarean section. People saying congratulations that year on their thing, yes, yeah, all right to say that, but till we get her out of intensive care, we don't know exactly what's wrong with her. 31 weeks and three days, she is very, very tiny. She's, I reckon she's less than about four pound, four pound in weight. She's got to be. Two months later, the baby has left hospital but the court has determined that, like her brother, she should be placed in foster care. The baby girl is brought to a neutral location to see her parents. Tiffany's turned up alone. I'm not going out with Michael anymore. We got in a big row over something and he had hit me and left a big bruise on my shoulder. So everything was just up in the air at the moment. Shh, 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 shh. 
It's the first time in Tiffany's life that she's been alone. I've got my support worker helping me basically get my parenting skills up to where they should be. But been diagnosed by the doctors with depression. So I've been put on medication for that. That's a little bit. It is getting a bit too much. It does put some stupid thoughts into your head. If it wasn't for my friends supporting me, I don't think that I'll be sat here now. Can you have kids? I've had to move to a different area, away from my call. Haven't heard anything from him. And on one hand, that's kind of good. But on the other hand, I was with him for like six years. Um, and... She's gone into temporary foster care, like to be, but into a different home. So they've been separated. I'm not sure if they've met each other yet or not. On certain terms, I do feel a bit more confident that, yes, I could do things differently this time. But on the other hand, I'm afraid that I would make mistakes. The social workers have a new challenge to decide whether Tiffany is capable of being a single parent. I hope that Tiffany can do it. It makes you nearly feel a failure because she feels a failure. You kind of feel you failed in your job to trying to help provide for the needs of her children. She does say, I, I don't know who I am. I've been controlled by so many people and now finally I'm trying to be who I am and she says I know I'm a mom and I need to be that but in some ways she hasn't quite found herself yet and I've expressed it very clearly to her if I have to stand up in the end of this care proceedings and argue that the children should remain in foster care it would be very heartbreaking for me as well because I generally would like to think that she can care for her children Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> Toby has now been in foster care for three months. There are signs he's beginning to thrive. Big fire engine. Yeah. Yeah. His speech is coming on a little yeah. bit more. He's been a lot more happier and behaved a bit more. He's not been as aggressive, which has been nice. No. <laughs> to see him thrive is just so nice to see. It's just such a beautiful thing to see. See him laugh, see him smile, see you know his, his humour develop. He was cross with the whole world around him, probably angry that they wouldn't meet his needs. He can communicate with you now. He can tell you what's wrong with him, what he wants. He can make signs. That's why you go in to do social work, because he can make some changes. Toby is tidying and then going to nursery in Nicky's car, OK? Yeah. yeah. High five. Good boy. Mummy, see you later. Mind your fingers. In June, eight months after social workers first got involved, 
Tiffany makes a monumental decision. I've been doing quite a lot of thinking lately and I've come up with the conclusion that it would be better for the kids to go into adoption because they'll be able to get the more better care that they need. It was a very hard decision to make. I didn't really want to make it, but I had to. That's really amazing what Tiffany's done for her children, but also for herself and I'm very sure that she will grasp this as an opportunity to sort out her past, to really get herself on track and make healthy relationships. <laughs> this case will probably stay with me for my whole life because I will always think about Toby and about the hope that he'd be doing all right now. Later on in life, the children will see that what I'd done was for the best of them. I love them so very much. There won't be a day or let alone a minute that I wouldn't be thinking about them. They'll have a happier life where they're going to go. Star. 